This is part 5 of WCF video series. In this video, we'll discuss how to make changes to WCF service without breaking the existing clients. This is continuation to part 4, so please watch part 4 before proceeding with this video. In this demo, we'll be using the example that we have implemented in part 3 of this video series. If you recollect from part 3, we have implemented Hello Service. The service has got a single service contract which is I hello service and a single operation contract get a message. Within the service implementation all this method does is concatenate that name parameter with this word hello and then return that string back. Okay, So a very simple service there and then we have hosted this service using a console application. The host is already running on my machine. And then we also have implemented a client application that's an ASP.NET web application. So basically within this client we are building an instance of the proxy class and then on the proxy uh, we are using that proxy basically to invoke that get message. So the interface of the client application is this. So if we enter something like pregame get message you know this application invokes the service and we get that response back from the WCF service. Now let's say for some reason um, we want to change the name of the service contract within the WCF service. Now at the moment the name of the service contract is I hello service. Okay so if you look at the client application we are using hello service client that's the name of the proxy class. Okay. Um, by creating an instance of this proxy class, we are able to invoke um, this get message operation. Okay, now let's go ahead and make a change to this I hello service interface. Let's change it to I hello service changed. Now, if we change it within the interface file, we also need to change it in the service file, service implementation file. And then within the app.config file of this host project, we need to specify the contract name there. So initially the contract was I hello service. Now it is changed to I hello service changed. So now let's close this host and then rerun once again. So now the WCF service has changed. Now let's look at what's going to happen to the client. So let's click this get message here. Look at that, we get an error. That's basically because the change that we have made right now is not compatible with the client. You know, it's a breaking change. It's going to break all the existing clients and we don't want that to happen. And if we want to prevent that from happening, use name property of the service contract attribute. That, will, that property will give the service contract an explicit name. And once the service contract has got the explicit name, you can change the name of that interface in any way you want. That's not going to break the clients. Let's actually look at that in action. So let's go back to the service. And here, let's use name property. Let's set name to I hello service. That was the original name of the service contract interface and we are setting the name property of the service contract attribute to that original name. Okay, so let's close the host and let's rerun it once again. Alright, the host has started. Let's go back to the client application. Let's enter something like pregime test. Look at that. Now the client is working without any problem. Okay, so what's happening behind the scenes? How did this name prop parameter of the service contract attribute fix that issue? Now, in order to understand that, we need to understand the Vistal document that the WCF service makes available for the clients to generate their proxy classes. So let's get to the Vistal document. And to get to the Vistal document, we use the base address. So let's use the base address. And within this Vistal document, we have got something called port type. So let's look at that XML element. And this port type XML element has got this name attribute. And at the moment, notice the name attribute is set to I hello service, which is nothing but the value that we have assigned to the name property of the service contract attribute. Now, for a moment, let's remove this name property 
and then let's run the host once again and let's refresh this Vistal document and now let's search for that port type element and look at what this name attribute is set to I hello service changed so this is what happens if we don't set an explicit name to the service contract using name parameter of the service contract attribute then this name attribute will be set to the name of the interface by default and now if you change the interface name obviously that is going to change the name of the port type element within the Vistal document which the client uses to communicate with your servers so obviously that's going to break the clients okay so on the other hand if you give it an explicit name something like this so name equals I hello service let's rerun it once again okay so the host is running and let's refresh this so port type look at that now it's set to the value of that name parameter okay now no matter what you change you know this interface name to it's not going to affect the existing clients okay pretty simple basically use name property of the service contract attribute and give it an explicit name to prevent the clients from breaking when service contract interface name is changed okay and we discussed about that port type XML element as well basically we can think of this port type as the interface the client uses to communicate with the WCFC service now when that interface changes obviously the clients that is the existing clients are going to break okay in a similar fashion we can set name property on the operation contract as well okay later if you change the name of the operation contract if you don't want the existing clients to break uh, give it an explicit name using the name parameter of the operation contract attribute you can try that on your own alright that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day